so perfect. I love doing it up here. Yay! One day I won't have to have this note to myself. Okay, we're up. Okay, we're up. Okay, we're happening. We're on. This is again. This is so. This is Watch Me Work. I'm Susan Lord Parks. This is Leandro. What's your last name? Zanetti. 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 What a great last name. Thank you. Leandro Zanetti, who's helping out uh, today and every day. Um, so Watch Me Work. We're in the lobby of the Public Theater. For those of you who are not actually with us live, and we have people here who are awesome. And so Watch Me Work is a. It's two things, or maybe more at the same time. Watch Me Work is a play. And we will have action followed by dialogue, which you will help us with, hopefully. And Watch Me Work is also, I have to read it from the paper, Watch Me Work is also a meta-theatrical free writing class. A free writing class, meta-theatrical free writing class. And so what we're going to do, this is the action of the play is going to take place first. And the action of the play will be 45 minutes long today. Some days will go longer, but today will just be 45 minutes. The action of the play is you guys and me, we're all going to do our work. Okay, for 45 minutes. I'm going to set the timer here, and when it goes off, we'll do the dialogue of the play, which is basically a Q&A with you guys, and you will be encouraged to ask me questions about your work and your creative process. Not my work, but your work. Okay, so if you're having trouble with a character or how to get started on something or plot development or whatever, 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 uh, please feel free to ask me. Also, for those of you who aren't here, it looks like everybody here is going to be writing today. For those of you who aren't here and, and uh, hanging out with us on, what is it, live stream? On live stream. Um, two things. One, you don't have to be writing, obviously, because this Watch Me Work is about any kind of work you're doing. And if you should have questions about your writing and or your work and your creative process, Leandro, where, what is the address? You can tweet at hashtag new play. Hashtag new play. So tweet us your questions uh, during the writing session, and we will answer them. That's a promise. Okay, so I'm gonna, anything, did I remember everything? Yep. Okay, I'm gonna set the timer and we're gonna get started. Okay, so. So the writing session has begun.
part or the work part, that's the act of the play, so we can like take a pause from the act, and I put an ear, phone, uh, ear uh, plug, which some of you who come regularly might want to bring, I just forgot, like, oh, like little ear plugs, that's an idea, just thinking, as I sit here and work, I think of like things that might be helpful to you guys, um, and Leandra just, <coughs> just reminded me that the public theaters might be doing a fire alarm starting at six. So if we hear a fire alarm go, they held it for an hour for us. And if they, oh, that, that's not the fire alarm. But if they, if, if we hear one, uh, we should, uh, I'm not sure what we should, I'm not gonna tell people to leave the building. Yeah, anyway. no, it's just a test. So oh, you don't have oh, to leave. It's oh, just it's a, a test. test. Yeah, they're just testing right. the system. Right, cool, okay, okay, great. Um, you probably saw me playing with this timer. It, it, it's temperamental, so I had to turn it on its head but to work, so uh, anyway, questions you guys might have about your work? Anybody, or answers? No? You guys are laughing, no answers? so often we get into those like they want one thing and when you think we'll, we'll be referencing Hamlet a lot because I think most people are familiar with Hamlet you know think so he wants to figure out what to do about his dad or his stepfather and his dad the ghost and he also wants to figure out what's up with Ophelia so he has different things you know um, so those are just examples like he has three things going on or more probably you know so sure you can have they can each of the characters you know, I think it's probably better to have, to, to sort of refine it, you know? So your main character, your Hamlet could have many things going on, but maybe your, I don't know, think of uh, Fortinbras, you know, what does he want, right? He doesn't want like seven things, you know what I mean? Because he'd be on like, you know what I mean? So maybe he did in the original, but then they cut it down. So now we only see him like walking across the stage saying something and then he keeps going. You know what I mean? Um, so maybe the, the the main characters can, and the and the less main characters might not. Just to make it like a strong, you want a strong line, not a fuzzy. You know, let's put in everything in the soup. You know, you don't want everything in the soup. You can have many soups. You know. Did you have a question? Starting a solo? Um, I've tried and I've always been sort of getting the first. That's just because that's there and I appreciate it. I'm working on something else at the moment. Sure, sure, that. sure. Well, are, okay, are you, um, have you done any uh, any performing? Oh, uh, yes. You I, I, you I look have a BFA now. Oh, you, you have a BFA, so you have a degree. <laughs> I'm looking at these people. These people have degrees. So you have a degree in acting. Ha ha. So, so you know everything that you need to know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. But, so, but you have some experience. Yes, which is great, okay. Yeah. And sometimes with a degree in acting, sometimes your experience might be more doing plays that have already been written or written by somebody else. So, yeah. so now you wanna write your own piece, right? I would say the best thing to do is find a time of day that works for you to sit down and write. So what time would be your special time of day? What's your favorite time of the day? I know he's laughing. The guy behind is laughing. Two is like I know, right? Like two in the afternoon. So like nap time, basically. Okay, great. So your favorite time is nap time. So do you have a, a, a schedule that will allow you to sit down every day and, and write during nap time? Um, not, not every day, but but I could, I could probably find the time. Probably in the evening. Okay, but why don't you, so why don't you do every day at two when you can, and then when you can't, you do it in the evening. So definitely claim your favorite time, right? Because that's part of it. And sit down for a certain amount of time, say 45 minutes, because you just did that now, right? So you can do it, 
you sit down and you just write. And you stop, you know, you get a few sentences and then you stop, just keep going. That's the thing. There's no secret other than just sitting down and, and doing the work. I guess, it, I, well, I guess it's just something, well, it's very personal, the subject matter that okay. we're getting into. Um, I mean, I mean, it's all personal, right? But I, sure. it's, it's the heavy personal. Right. Um, and so I guess it's always like I, I don't know how to, you know, I'm creating the characters of, of the loved ones in my life. Oh, there's more. Wait, there's more. It's not just a solo show. It's like a solo tell-all <laughs> show. Don't worry, we won't, we won't tell anybody. What you can do is write it and not show it to anybody. Right? Just write it. So if you hear the voice in your head going, you can't tell that about Aunt Junie Pie. Fuck it, shut up. I just got to keep writing, right? And your job is just to show up every day at 2 for 45 minutes or maybe 30 minutes, how about? And just put something down on paper and keep going. Don't edit until you're done. And don't worry about telling the family secrets. You're not showing it to anybody, so it's kind of like just in your head. Okay, and then once you get it down on paper, then we'll talk about how to, you know, what it is. But right now, it's just a whole bunch of like, oh, I think I'll go outside. No, I might, oh, I don't know, it's New York. And you know, and you stay inside your whole life. Go outside, see what's going on. And then we'll have something to work with. But show up, try showing up every day for yourself, okay? That's the most important thing. Anybody? Oh. Oh, go ahead, one more, and then we go to the gentleman behind you. Um, so the you know, the question, you're trying to, like, you're trying to focus, so you're trying to convey a message or a point of story, what are you trying, like, you're trying to get to? Should we go into the, like, subject, or should we just go into it and just write, and just sort of keep the focus about sticking, like, a point A to point B as well? I think your point A is sitting down, and your point B is writing. That's the main thing. Think about the form, the structure, who you're going to offend with your writing, what prizes you're going to win, what you're going to say in your acceptance speech. All that stuff comes later. you got to sit down and write. Okay. If you already had it written, then we could talk about the other things. But just write and see what happens. You have to give yourself permission to write. Okay. So try that and see what happens and maybe come back and after you've done that for, I don't know, a week or something, you come back and we'll talk about it some more. Okay? Okay. Sir, behind you, go ahead. So there's, he's trying to express pertinent information. Uh-huh. What? Something you've got to know about this character that reveals their psyche. Something you've got to know about a character that reveals their psyche and how and it's happened in the past. And how do you convey that information in the present without being like, oh my God, he's just talking. Right? Or he's just blah, 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 blah. Right? So it's uh, emotion connected to an emotion, right? If I'm telling you like, because anything that your character says is totally boring unless it's connected to the need of the character, right? And, and the need other than like the need to tell the story, that's duh. I'm talking about what's going on right now, okay? So um, they might tell, I'm just thinking, what's an example like Hamlet? I can't think of one off the top of my head. Oh, you know, the guy in the, the grave digger. What's the name of the grave digger? No. No. The grave digger. Oh, the skull? York. 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 Yeah. Right. Oh, York. Right. So, you know, but York and the grave digger. There's grave digger York, right? Oh, long time ago, I'm paraphrasing horribly. Long time ago, when you were born, such and such and such and such was happening, right? That tells us some pertinent information that happened in the past. That's really interesting. Because why? Because the character really wants to tell this information because it's connected to an emotion. He's digging. He finds a skull. They talk about it, right? It's it's you dirt on your hands. A skull in the graveyard. It's an oh, alas, poor York. I knew you way in the way when you used to dance around or whatever the fuck he says. Excuse me, but you know what I'm talking about, right? He's telling alas, poor York. I knew when you used to dance around. That's right. That's information from the past. 
but it has something to do with something because there he is looking at the skull, thinking about mortality and his own life and blah, and his dad and all this kind of shit, right? It's tied to a really strong emotion, okay? So the, tie it to a really strong emotion other than the need to just re repeat some information to the audience, all right? Okay, do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Some present tense desire, some present tense emotion. Something the character's wrestling with, and this uh, telling of the information helps him to wrestle with this problem that he's wrestling with. Okay, so that's just think of Hamlet. Uh, whenever you have a problem, just think of Hamlet. Not only will your day seem so much brighter, but you know, you'll figure out all your dramaturgical issues. You know? Oh, three minutes. Oh, yes, Miss Man, over here. Yes. Oh. Right. Right. So, are you writing a novel? No, I was okay. trying to write a play, but I feel like right. 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 Sometimes it's almost more like in the right so you want it so you're writing a play tell me if I got this. you're writing a play and she wants to know wow it's kind of heavy on the details. the details and the like explain it to explain or yeah. to big stage directions oh just don't write stage directions anymore no, just don't write them. no look at again Hamlet how many stage directions do you have not very many right right enter right. exit or you know Whatever that play is, The Winter's Tale, Exit Pursued by a Bear, right? I mean, wow, make him like that. Don't write any stage directions or write very small ones, okay? And what you have to do two things. You trust your collaborators, because when you write a big, long stage direction, you're not really, you know, it has to be just like this, you know? And some writers used to do that. I've heard stories of like Samuel Beckett, who would show up to make sure that, you know, his play was exactly how he wanted. You know, that's a lot of work. You know what I'm saying? So what you want to do is trust your collaborators by not writing so many stage directions. And most importantly, you want to put the action in the line. The action in the line, right? So if someone says, give me those gloves. Give me those gloves. That means what? There's some gloves over there that I want, right? Is that, you see what I'm saying? It's not like gloves on the table. She reaches for them. Hey, give me. Not so good. Right, give me those gloves. Think of it again. Shakespeare does it all the time. You want to put your action in the line. In the line. That will make your writing come alive. Because it's like, ah, everyone's talking like this instead of, and explain in the stage directions. Okay? So just, just stop writing stage directions. Just don't write them. And if you write, keep, or maybe you are writing a novel, but I believe you. I believe you're writing a play. I believe you're writing a play. Just, just cut out the stage directions and read some Shakespeare. Because he does it really, really well, the no stage direction kind of thing. Okay? Okay. okay. Anyone, anyone have a burning question? Burning. A uh, question that we must answer? Yes, sir. Hi. Yes. When did you stop? You know? What do you mean? Stop what? Like the whole, like the thing. When is the thing that put the brush down? Especially if you're like in maybe the opposite situation where you already have the story, you have the character. Right. The end. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, there's a stopping point. I mean, I'm serious. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, I'm not being funny. You get to the end, right? Okay, and then you're like, hmm, well, maybe I need to rewrite it. So when do you stop with the rewriting, maybe? Yeah. That's right? What I mean. Okay. Like trying to develop it. If you feel like the character was under, underdeveloped, and then it's like, okay, well, I've been developing <coughs> the character. All right. Right, right. You know? It's a it's a feel thing, and that's a it's a skill that you're learning right now. When to stop rewriting, right? right? It's a skill. Uh, what uh, you know the in um, that play with Maggie the cat. 